Hi, everyone. I am Andrew Fazekas, the Night Sky Guy, your host for this week's Night Sky Preview. It is December 18th, 2023. It's great to be back, folks. You could probably hear my voice is still a little rusty. Uh, I caught COVID after three and a half years of dodging it. Couldn't dodge it any longer. And uh, so I was resting all week last week. It was great. And uh, back in action, lots of things in the sky. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're preparing for the holidays. Uh, Probably helter-skelter going everywhere. And I know what you mean. Same here with my family. But there's always interesting things happening in the night sky. And if you have a few moments, even if it's just a few, you know, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes this week, there are some amazing things that you can mark down on your calendar. So why don't we jump in? And hey, I'd love to hear where you're watching from. I love to see my stargazing friends, to know where they are around the world. We share the same sky, same amazing things. So why don't we begin? Let's boot up the uh, planetarium program. This is Sky Safari Pro that I like to use from Simulation Curriculum great outfit. And this is what the skies look like right now, uh, December 18th after sun sets in the west. Okay, so we're heading into the holiday season real fast. And what does the sky have to offer? Some really great presents for us. And this comes in the form of the moon pairing up with different things in the sky. As always, the moon is just wonderful to be able to use as a guidepost in seeing some amazing things. I can see already folks here, Cynthia from Michigan, cold and snowy, Celeste from Dallas, Texas, great of you to join us. Uh, And uh, JJ Pascal is asking, uh, or at least saying that she saw a lot of, um, a lot of uh, gem, a couple of geminids. Yes, did you guys see the meteor shower? It was fantastic. Even from Montreal, I, and with light pollution around where I am, I was able to count uh, a few dozen meteors uh, over the course of a couple of hours, uh, bundled up, uh, hot chocolate and all of that. It was visible. I managed to do that even though I was sick. I did go out and it was a lot of fun. And did you catch any of them? Because they were just gorgeous. And guess what? We're not finished with meteor showers. So just Stay with me. There's more interesting things. But as you can see in this uh, setup right now on the screen, is you can see that there is the moon. And the moon is sandwiched between two planets. Now, I don't want you to think straight, uh, get, you know, put you astray here, but Neptune is something that you need a telescope really for, or very strong binoculars and dark skies. So don't worry too much about Neptune. That's not something that's going to be in the realm of of something that's easy at all. But Saturn is. Saturn is a beautiful planet, and it's something that's definitely worth looking for. And the moon and Saturn will be fairly close together in the sky. So look for on the on the lit portion of the moon. Let me just zoom in and you'll see what I mean. You can see the lit portion of the moon, the crescent moon. Look for that beautiful yellowy star-like object. That's kind of in the belly button of Aquarius, the water bearer that you can see here close up. So Saturn, of course, if you have a small telescope, you can see the rings of Saturn. But definitely to the naked eye, Saturn appears as a brilliant yellow dot in the sky after sunset. It's amazing to think it takes 84 minutes for the light to reach us. That's 1.5 billion kilometers away that Saturn is. Just amazing. You can see also joining us today is Rene from Denmark. Cher from Alberta. Cloudy here. Yes, I can hear. It's raining here in Montreal where I am. And Jonathan from Bristol, UK. Um, Very cool. And we also have greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Catherine as well joining us. Hello to all of you. Thank you so much for joining. So this is the setup for today, um, December 18th. Uh, Monday. So check that out. It's really, really cool. Now, if we can go sort of zoom outside and you can see our friend Jupiter is really making its mark in the eastern, southeastern sky. There's no doubt about it. 
as soon as darkness falls, you'll see a really brilliant star-like object in the southeast. That's Jupiter. Now, if we move uh, uh, later into the week as, as, uh, and watch the moon, see where the moon is in the middle of the screen. If I go to Tuesday, the moon will be pairing up with Neptune. Again, this is an, a Neptune is something if you need a telescope for, really. So if you happen to have a telescope, tomorrow, Tuesday, will be the 19th, will be the, a great opportunity to try this challenge if you have a telescope to see if you can see that greenish-blue faint dot uh, next to the moon. Now, if you have a strong pair of binoculars, maybe you're out in the countryside. Again, that's something that's in the realm of possibility of looking for Neptune. So do try that. Again, that's Tuesday. So if we move out and we continue our journey in uh, uh, on a weekly, on a daily basis, I should say, this is Wednesday night. You can see where where the moon is, and it's heading towards our friend Jupiter. And this is what I want you to take note at. By Thursday, if we go to Thursday, Jupiter and the moon will be pairing up. Just gorgeous. And guess what? That's just in time for the solstice, the winter solstice. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, and of course, the beginning of summer, for those of you lucky enough to be in the Southern Hemisphere, at 10.27 p.m. Eastern Time here in North America is when officially winter begins in the North and summer in the South. And marking that period in time, astronomically, we've got, we're lucky enough to have the Moon and Jupiter together and it will be very nice for the for those of you looking with just the unaided eye. This is a, just a gorgeous sight. This will be hanging, you know, high in the southeastern sky. That is what you'll be looking for: Jupiter and the Moon together uh, on the solstice, marking the solstice. Of course, this is the uh, you know the 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 longest nights uh, here in the northern hemisphere. Longest. Uh, night, uh, uh, shortest night in the southern hemisphere, I should say. So really, uh, it's a pivotal time, astronomically speaking, for our planet. And um, it's just gorgeous to be able to see these two celestial objects together. Now, who else do we have here joining us today? We've got Gopa from New Jersey. We've got Mariska from uh, north of the Netherlands. Uh, Manas, greetings from India. Wonderful for you to be. Amy, hello, uh, fellow Canuck. Uh, Jack from Santa Monica, California. Maria from Glasgow, UK, joining us. Gina from Connecticut. She says she saw a big fire geminid, uh, fireball last week. That is awesome. Peter, my fr old friend Peter, we used to work together a long time ago, uh, goes back to the day. Peter, so nice of you to join us. It's great to see you on the broadcast today. And uh, Rainy, Cal I guess California, we've got Dory from Montana joining us. Renee again from uh, Denmark. So nice, everyone's joining today. It's just as good. And Isabel from Paris, beautiful Paris. Elizabeth from Minnesota, and Michelle from Victoria, BC. It's so nice to see everyone joining the broadcast. Continue putting in where you're watching from. And if you saw any Geminids, love to hear that as well. Uh, oh, and we've got Curry from the Kalahari Desert in Botswana. My goodness, that uh, what a beautiful place uh, in Botswana. And I was very lucky to be in the southern part of Kalahari in my younger days. I used to do a lot of uh, work uh, in my previous life as a wildlife biologist working on African antelopes, and I spent a lot of time looking at the stars from the Kalahari. I actually saw Halley's Comet back in the day in 1986 from the Kalahari. Really a beautiful, beautiful uh, area. Southern Africa is just a gorgeous spot. I plan on going back again and visiting and doing some more stargazing. Thank you, Kuro, for watching, and I hope you get some tidbits of what to see. And you know what I'm showing you here? Obviously, the, 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 what I have it set here is mid-northern latitude, where I am. I'm in Montreal, Canada, which is halfway between the equator and North Pole. Now, Jupiter and Moon will be visible even from South Africa but, and, and from Botswana and all these other places around the world, even in the Southern Hemisphere, but just in a different orientation than what I'm seeing. But the pair 
will be seen together across the world. So this is Thursday on um, the solstice. And then if we move on to Friday, look at that. The moon will still be close to Jupiter on Friday, but it will be jumped from one side of Jupiter to the other. See, so Thursday, the moon is over here. And Friday, the moon is on the other side of Jupiter. Isn't that cool? How it just jumps from one side. Shows you the celestial mechanics at play as the moon orbits our little planet. And of course, Jupiter is much farther away than the moon. Remember, the moon on average is about only 400,000 kilometers uh, from the Earth, while Jupiter, let's see, take a look exactly what it is. It's 651 million kilometers away, and it takes light 36 minutes to reach your eye. You're traveling back in time when you're looking at Jupiter, 36 minutes. What were you doing? Maybe you were eating, maybe you're watching a favorite TV show, walking the dog, taking a shower maybe. 36 minutes in the past before, uh, that's how long the light beam takes to reach your eye from Jupiter. Just something to keep in mind. Some really cool kind of awe and wonder that's attached to watching the skies. Isn't that the case? I, I, I think so. I do think so. So that's really uh, on Friday. And then uh, what else is visible on Friday? And I want you to take a oh, Remember we, I mentioned that there is another meteor shower? Of course, the, the Geminids always get the, the, the top billing. But there is another small shower that's happening. It's called the Ursids. The Ursids. And it's named after... Uh, um, Ursa Major that, and Minor that it appears to the region where uh, they appear to come out from, Ursids. And let me show you where they are. The Ursids, we're going to center it right here. You can see it's right very close to actually Polaris, the North Star where they appeared right out from. Now, this is a, a shower that's really for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere like Botswana, unfortunately, this isn't the uh, well placed for you because it's so close to the North Celestial Pole. And that is occupied by that small little constellation called the Little Bear or Ursa Minor. And you can see in this animation how they seem to radiate out from these individual shooting stars from that singular point in the sky occupied by the Little Bear, right? And the Little Bear or the, and is, uh, its main feature that you'll see is also called the Little Dipper. You all probably have heard of the Big Dipper. That's right down here. You can see this is uh, early in the evening on Friday, but it'll go a little bit later. As soon as darkness falls, this is something that you'll need. Look towards the north. The North Star or Polaris is over here. Of course, the entire sky rotates around this pivot point, right? It's this magical pivot point in the sky. Uh, the Earth's axis, if you point it out towards the sky, goes through this one star. Just happens to be like that for us. Um, <clears throat> we're living in that epoch where the Polaris is happens to occupy that north celestial pole position. And so the entire sky rotates. If I show you hour by hour, you see that? See how it just rotates around as I go later in the night, hour by hour? That's what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to go back here to Friday night. And what I want you to see is there's the, the Big Dipper. That's Ursa Major, the Big Bear. That's the Big Dipper that's so familiar, very close to the horizon. Not a great time to see it uh, in the early evening. But uh, if you see above it is the little, little Dipper right here. There's the tail of the little bear and the body of the bear is, the, is right here. Uh, and the bowl, the little bowl, and um, Polaris. It's not the brightest of stars. A lot of people mistaken the North Star as being maybe the brightest star in the sky. It's not. It's actually a very mediocre looking star, but it's bright enough to see even under suburban light pollution. So you don't need telescopes or binoculars to see the North Star. But generally, this is the spot where the Ursids appear to radiate out from. Let me put that back again. There you go. And so how many do you can you expect of shooting stars? Maybe anywhere from five to upwards of 10 shooting stars per hour this Friday night. So this is Friday, uh, December 22nd, just a couple of days before Christmas Eve. And uh, this is a fun thing. If you've got clear skies Friday night, 
check it out. The Ursid Meteor Shower. Um, you, if you have uh, dark skies, no light pollution, you'll probably see closer to 10 shooting stars per hour. If you're in a light polluted suburb, maybe two or three, maybe five, if you're lucky, of shooting stars per hour. It's not much, but it's a lot of fun still to see it. And um, uh, again, this is December 22nd, uh, 5 to 10 meteor shower, and it's Friday night, so you don't have to stay overnight. This is something that you'd see soon after darkness falls, and uh, just look towards the north, and it's uh, um, it's really, really cool to be able to see. Uh, we have a question coming in on YouTube, ask, has anyone been hit by a meteorite? Yeah, actually, there has been a couple of instances, even a dog. Uh, I think it was in Egypt, there's a record of a dog having been killed by a falling meteorite. Um, and uh, there's been a couple of incidences of people, you know, getting even, um, you know, hurt by pieces of a meteorite that fell into their house. Uh, this has happened, I think, in New Jersey, there was one a few decades ago. Um, so you can look it up in Wikipedia and, and find it out for yourself. But yes, uh, meteor, meteors do fall on a regular basis, but really during a shower, we have multiples in a very short time that fall, and most of them get burnt up. They're only the size of a grain of sand, most of these meteors. Um, and by the way, in, ter in terms of terminology, when you see it flying in space, that little uh, streak of light, we call that a meteor. And once it lands on the ground, then it's called a meteorite. So that's just the difference between meteor and meteorite. And a very, very bright meteor, by the way, ones that really shine very, very bright and are impressive, those are called bolides or fireballs. And they're caused by baseball to basketball sized stones. So the Ursids, a great little show just before Christmas. Got clear skies, worth to step outside maybe for a half hour and, 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 and take a view. If it's not too cold, make sure you dress warmly. Um, and then what else is there? Just to round it out, um, if we kind of zoom out like that and we look, there's our friend, the, the, the Jupiter and the moon. And if we kind of go to the next day, Saturday, the moon has now moved to onto the uh, very close to where Uranus is. Take a look. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So if you're looking for something a little more exotic, you've got the Pleiades star cluster right there next to the moon on Saturday. Uh, this is December 23rd. So this Saturday, December 23rd, the moon will be kind of snuggling up to the Pleiades star cluster and the green giant, ice giant planet Uranus is on the other side of the moon. So one side is a star cluster, the other side is a very distant ice giant world. Looks like a green dot in binoculars. You're going to need binoculars to see it. But of course, the, the waxing gibbous moon is going to be very bright, making it a challenge to see both Pleiades and Uranus. But it's something if you're up for it, you could try uh, your hand at it. And of course, all of this action is happening in the constellation Taurus the Bull. And then if we move on to Sunday, you can see the moon is uh, already deeper into the constellation Taurus. Very, very nice uh, Again, a bright constellation and kind of in between two bright stars, an orange-hued Aldebaran and a much more yellow-colored Capella. And it'll make a really nice trio for Sunday night. Also, what I want you to notice is that it's going to be embedded inside a uh, asterism. Let me just see if I can set that in my uh, uh, planetarium program right there. So this is called the Winter Hexagon, and I'm going to put it up a little bit later at night so it rises into the sky a little bit. So this is around 9 o'clock, okay, near 9 o'clock at night, looking towards the east, southeast, and these are constellations visible throughout the world. So I'm talking about something that you should be able to see in the southern hemisphere. So my friend there in Botswana should be able to see this. It'll be upside down from what you're seeing here. Okay, this is the view from those for those of us in the northern hemisphere. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's reversed. It's kind of literally upside down from the view you're seeing on your screen right now. But it's there. And what's interesting is that the moon is going to be 
right next to this winter hexagon. Now, it's not the best time to see it, but I'll just point it out that the, wind, the moon is going to be going through this part of the sky early next week. So by Monday, Chris, uh, Christmas Day, the moon will be smack dab in the middle of this winter hexagon that's marked by bright stars. So you've got Aldebaran over here. You've got Capella up here. Then you have the Gemini twins, Castor and Pollux. And then Procyon right here that marks the uh, Canis Minor, this little dog. Canis Major, the big dog, is marked by Sirius. And then Rigel up here as the foot of Orion the Hunter. And these are all bright stars, and each of them marks kind of a like a point in this great hexagon, the, what we call the winter hexagon, because it kind of marks the winter skies for those of us in the northern hemisphere. It's a great kind of uh, uh, pattern, star pattern, to learn multiple different constellations that are bright in this time of the year around the world. So in the summertime, this is a great marker for summertime constellations. And those of us in winter, this is for our winter constellation that we're so familiar with. So I'll come back to this in the coming weeks and months because there's so much to talk about in this area of sky. And I really want you to learn this. Now, the moon in the in the picture right now, not necessarily the best time to see it, but still, I just wanted you to mark, understand that on Monday, Christmas Day, this is where the moon is. And if you want to kind of think of a Christmas star, maybe those of you that are interested in that kind of thing, and maybe a little bit nostalgia, well, why you, you'll probably notice a very bright star marking Christmas Day uh, uh, evening skies as when sun sets on Christmas Day Monday, uh, Sirius will be the, the brightest star in the entire sky, will be rising in the eastern uh, horizon uh, soon after darkness falls on Christmas Day, December 25th. So check that out. That's kind of really neat. If you've got clear skies on Christmas Day, just something to think about. Sirius, 8.6 light years away. It's the brightest star in the entire heavens across the entire world. This is the brightest star. And it'll be just rising beautifully on Christmas Day. And by the way, on Monday, Christmas Day, I'm going to take a break. I'll be with my children and kids and taking Christmas Day off. But I will return on Tuesday, so tw December 26, which, by the way, the moon will be full on Christmas uh, on Boxing Day here in Canada, December 26. December 26, the moon will be full and right in the middle of the hexagon. So just a little preview. And it's also called the cold moon, very appropriately, or the long night moon also because it is, you know, around the longest uh, peri uh, longest night uh, time period in the in the calendar year. So there you have it, folks. All kinds of really cool things in the sky to see. And of course, always be on the lookout for auroras. I will also be checking for alerts and let you guys know as usual and give you all the sky charts too. I don't want you to miss out on anything that I've spoken about here. Uh, you'll have those sky charts available on my timeline. Hey, if you found value in this video on the tour of the night sky that I give every week, if you do like that and having fun, please show your support by subscribing to my channel, whether it's you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, Twitch or Twitter, please do subscribe, share my videos, like my videos. It really allows me to bring this content to you every week. It's really my pleasure. It's my passion. I love it. And your support really allows me to do that. So please do that all the good stuff that you can uh, uh, to show your support. I love being in your homes every week, and I wish all of you happy holidays, uh, no matter where you are in the world and what you celebrate. I hope you are with your friends and family. hope you have some quiet time or have at least some fun time. I know with children, there's <laughs> quiet, <laughs> that's a relative, really. But uh, have some fun. Uh, I will see you next week, Tuesday. So just remember, not on Monday as usual, but on Tuesday because Monday is going to be Christmas Day. So I'll take that off. But I love seeing you guys. We're almost at the end of the year. We'll have another show, obviously, before the end of the year. And I'll be pumping all these shows out to you as usual. Uh, I love seeing all the comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining me and supporting and being on this journey with me. Lots of exciting things are in the works for next year. I'll let you know. They are just teaser. There are some interesting things I have planned. 
So new content, new things, new adventures, I guess, that I'll be involved in. So uh, stay along the journey with me. Stay, stay, stay safe and healthy during the holidays. And as always, I wish all of you clear skies. Till the next video, bye-bye.